This lesson talks about what the cross product is and uh, it's another way uh, different than the dot product to uh, loosely again uh, multiply vectors. It's an operation between two vectors. And so uh, we'll define what the cross product is at the beginning here. Uh, let A and B be two vectors arranged tail to tail forming an angle theta. So there's two vectors arranged tail to tail. Theta is the angle between them. And theta would be any could be any angle between 0 and 180 degrees. If theta actually equals 0 or equals 180, that's a special case that we'll talk about in the last page of the lesson, I believe it is. The cross product is defined to be, or sorry, not defined, but the cross product yields, when you do the cross product, a vector perpendicular to both A and B. So this uh, blue vector here is perpendicular to A and B both. And so that's what the cross product is. When you take the cross product of A and B, you get a vector perpendicular to the two, two vectors you started with. And so this is only defined in three-dimensional space. It's not possible for this to happen in two-dimensional space. You do not take the cross product of two-dimensional vectors. Now the right-hand rule, there's actually two directions that that perpendicular vector could be. And this is important if you ever take any physics courses because it only is in one of the directions. The right-hand rule says this, if you put your right hand so that your fingers point in the direction of the first vector and curl towards the second, then the thumb points in the, the direction of the cross product vector. So if it's A cross B, the fingers in that right hand, this only works with the right hand, uh, point from A, the first vector, and curl towards the second vector. Now, if I were talking about B cross A, I would have to take my right hand and flip it upside down in order for the uh, uh, fingers to curl from B towards A, then my thumb would be pointing down and the cross product would be down for B cross A. Um, that idea, the right hand rule, is not going to be important in the uh, calculus and vectors course. Uh, you will rarely see it, but uh, it could be important if you're taking some physics courses. Now the magnitude or length of, because you know there's a lot of different lengths I could have for, here for this vector that's perpendicular to A and B, the magnitude of the cross product is defined to be the area of the parallelogram de determined by vectors A and B. So we draw in another A, another B, the length of that cross product is defined to be the area of this parallelogram. Now in order to find the area of the parallelogram, so that's the magnitude of the cross product, uh, this side here, which is actually the distance between these two parallel sides, can be found using a little bit of right angle trigonometry, and it's very similar to components. If you think of this triangle here, uh, this is actually, it's the same formula as the vertical component. It's hard to imagine that because it's not completely vertical. But this is the opposite side to that angle, and this is the hypotenuse. That's why we're using sine. So the uh, length of that uh, distance right there is the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle. So in order to find the area of the parallelogram, uh, it's uh, just base times height. So thinking of the vector A as the base, and then length of B sine theta as the height, then that's the formula for the uh, magnitude of the cross product. Looks a lot like the dot, one of the dot product formula, except um, we have a cos theta here. Sorry, that has a cos theta here. Where we have a sine theta here for the magnitude of the cross product. So as I was saying at the bottom of the last page, since the cross product is perpendicular to both those two vectors, that can only happen in three-dimensional space. So there's uh, no cross product in two-dimensional space. Now this yellow figure here is meant to represent a plane, a flat surface that goes infinitely in all directions. And we're told that the length of C is 4 and the length of D is 6 and the angle between them is 17 degrees. So we're asked to find each cross product magnitude and then state the direction. So C cross D we would go 4 times 6 times the sine of 17 degrees which is about 7. And D cross C we would go instead of 4 times 6, 6 times 4 still times the sine of 17. So uh, changing the order of the 4 times 6 to 6 times 4 does not change its magnitude. So uh, the magnitudes of both of those would certainly be the same. Now to do C cross D, if you take your right hand, the only in order to have your fingers going in the direction of C and curling towards D, the only way that that can happen is if your hand is pointing with a thumb down. Um, if you hold it up towards the screen there and have the, f the fingers curling from C towards D, then the thumb's pointing down. Uh, 
For the D cross C one, the uh, the right hand would be uh, with the thumb up. If the uh, fingers are curling from D towards C when it says D cross C. So that's the direction of the D cross C vector up out of the page. Now there's a formula for calculating the cross product if you're given the vectors in component form. So A1, A2, A3 for A and B1, B2, B3 for uh, vector B. And there's actually, I'm going to give you two different ones here. Um, this is the formula a2 b3 minus b2 a3 comma the y component is a3 b1 minus uh, b3 a1 comma and then a1 b2 minus b1 a2 now if you don't want to memorize that the second way is what most people or more people use because it's a little easier to remember and what you do and I'll show you in this example we're given these two vectors a and b and so a is negative 2, 4, 1. So what you do is you write down the components. Start with the y component and write the z component. Cycle back to the x and then write the y again. So it goes y, z, x, y again. And do the same thing with the second vector. We're, cross, we're taking the cross product of a and b, a first and then b second. So we go 2, 5, 3, 2, y, z, back to x and then y again. And draw arrows like this. Now you start at the 4. So what you do is you go you start here and you cycle this way so you go 4 times 5 minus 2 times 1 so that's the x component now we just finished with the 1 so now for the y component we're here so you go 1 times 3 minus 5 times negative 2 so 1 times 3 minus 5 times negative 2 comma and then uh, we finished here at negative 2 so negative 2 times 2 minus 3 times 4 and that's the z component and you figure out each of those. 20 minus 2 is 18. 1, this would be uh, plus 10 is 13. Negative 4 minus 12 is negative 16. So that's uh, A cross B. To do B cross A, the only difference is the 2, 5, 3, 2 is on top and the 4, 1, negative 2, 4 is in the bottom. And so you go 2 times 1 uh, minus 4 times 5. That's the X. 5 times negative 2 minus 1 times 3 and then 3 times 4 minus negative 2 times 2. Now, minus negative 2, same as plus 2 times 2 in the end. And notice that that works out to be the exact opposite of that vector. Just like in the previous page, uh, when you change the order, um, one was up and one was down. Okay? So if you change the order of the cross product, the only thing it does is change the signs of all your components. They're exact opposites. In example 3, we're going to determine the area of the parallelogram formed by uh, these four points, D, E, F, and G. And so there's D, E, F, and G. Now, in order to find the area, we'll use the magnitude of the cross product. So all we need to do is uh, find two vectors that uh, um, define two non-parallel sides of this uh, uh, parallelogram. And so I'm going to use G, D, and G, F. And so GD, negative 1 minus negative 2 is 1, 0 minus negative 7 is 7, and 5 minus 4 is 1. So those are the components of GD, and we'll do the same with GF. GF works out to be 2, 4, negative 3. So the area of the parallelogram is the magnitude of the cross product. So you need to take the cross product of these two vectors. So 7, 1, 1, 7, 4, negative 3, 2, 4. And then draw your arrows. So 7 times negative 3 minus 4 times 1 for the x, 1 times 2, subtract negative 3 times 1, or plus 3 times 1, and then 1 times 4 minus 2 times 7 for the z. And so that's the um, components of GD cross GF. The area of the parallelogram is the magnitude of that vector. So we take the root of uh, each component squared and added, and we get the root of 750. And that reduces to, uh, because 25 times 30 is uh, 750, and the root of 25 is 5, so that's 5 root 30. So that's the exact area in square units of this parallelogram. Now, what if the uh, angle between the vectors is either 0 or 180? Uh, the cross product is defined on angles between 0 and 180. Well, remember that the sine of 0 is 0, and so is the sine of 180. So if you think of that uh, magnitude of the cross product formula, think of the area of the parallelogram, then it's magnitude of A times magnitude of B times the sine of the angle. And if the sine of the angle is 0, then anything multiplied by 0 is 0. So this magnitude works out to be 0. 
And so if, uh, if the two vectors are parallel in the same direction, which the angle is zero between them, or exactly opposite if the angle between them is 180, then the magnitude of the cross product is zero. And then the only vector whose magnitude is zero is the zero vector. So a cross b is a zero vector, or any vector cross with itself is also the zero vector. Now, uh, as was illustrated in a previous example, a cross b and b cross a are opposites, hence the negative here. That's called the anti-commutative law. The distributive law says that a cross the sum of b and c is equal to a cross b plus a cross c. And again, just as I noted up here, any vector cross with itself is a zero vector. 